we thought we would do an impromptu podcast before Vlogmas, didn't we? So I've just walked around the house, then I'm... Hmm. This might be a bad idea. I've walked around the house trying to find somewhere where the light is not really, really weird. And weirdly enough, the dark room, which is this room that I've painted even the ceiling, um, a dark colour, it's in Chira Blue. Oh, something's done. Something's chipped the wall over there, I've just spotted it. I think it's the chair, never mind. Uh, yeah, so the dark room is the room with the best filming light, weirdly. This is the dark room. Look, that's a painting that, well, it's a lithograph really, it's got holes in it because um, it was involved in a fire. That's what just distracted me there, look. look. I think it's the edge of the seat that's done it. Yeah. What a bummer. Right, so I'm going to get, just make you dizzy, I'll show you all around. I am going to get my knitted things and my tripod and chat to you about knitting ahead of Vlogmas starting, which will be all the usual Christmassy family cooking, walking, making stuff. Right, I've told the dogs that I'm podcasting, so hopefully it won't be as much of a debacle as it was last time. <laughs> that was ridiculous. I've gathered together all the things that I wanted to show you. Why am I talking in past tense when I haven't done it yet? That I want to show you. Sneak peek. It's a brave, bold colour for me, isn't it? Um, I don't know where to start. I think I ought to start ahead of Vlogmas because there might be different people here now than there were back then. <laughs> I don't know what I'm talking about. I know what I mean. Right, so, right, so. Introductions. My name is Gaynor. I spell it a different way to the correct way. The name is Welsh and the correct spelling is G-A-Y-N-O-R and I spell it G-A-Y-N-A. -A. That's not, not because that's how I spell it, that's how it was spelt for me when I was, when I was born. And that's just the way it is. And I don't know why I'm telling you. <laughs> Gone off on a tangent. I have three children. Bill is my eldest, he's 17. Teddy is my middle one, he is 15 in a couple of weeks. Wilfred is my little one, he is going to be 12 in the new year. I'm married to Toby, um, he's their dad. You probably just heard a bit of a southwest twang to my accent and that is because I live in the southwest of England, just below Bristol and I am, I would count myself as a Southwest girl. I was born in Plymouth and I have lived mostly in the Southwest for my entire life, aside from a few years at university when I went to London and I was so poor, I didn't enjoy that. And also we lived in the Midlands near Kettering well, actually in Kettering for a little while, but also in Woodford, just outside Kettering. But only for a few years. Did you really need to know any of that? I don't think you did. Why did I tell you that? <laughs> for some reason, as a person who's moved around a lot, it's quite an important thing to me. It's quite like a big deal. Um, I'm going to be cutting out lots of erms um, and anytime I say something totally ridiculous because this is a podcast if it was a vlog I'd just leave it in but because it's a podcast I feel like it's it's got to be slightly more polished which is a load of rubbish because nobody seems to care people always say where they can be found on the internet but there's absolutely no point in me telling you because I'm really only here. 
I do have, oh, there's a blue tit, my favourite bird. They are absolute brutes though, on my bay tree. I think it's my favourite bird because when I was a little girl, we had placemats, those hard sort of MDF placemats with a picture on them. And I always had the blue tit bird. But I think... I think I scratched away at it or drew on it or something. I know I defaced it in some way, but I wasn't trying to deface it. I think I was trying to be part of the picture, which sounds ridiculous. What was I talking about before I got distracted by a blue tit? I'm nearly 47, so you know what's going on. My head is fried and having children at the ages that mine are at they, they are wonderful but also slightly challenging got a cup of tea isn't my mug beautiful how delish is that can't show you the stamp at the bottom obviously because there's a cup of tea in here and i don't want to be wearing it this is a mug made by my friend joe who is my also my pottery teacher she was my friend first and then she started doing pottery lessons oh, highlight of the week and uh, she has an Etsy shop I don't think there's anything in there because she's just done a very successful very small little pop-up market and pretty much got wiped out people went mad for her stuff so I was glad I got my mug first and I've got a matching pasta bowl and a matching soup bowl this is big enough for a small soup as well. It's really lovely. Her name on Instagram is Joanna Lampley. I'll put it down below in the box. And that's what I was telling you, isn't it? That I, I, I am on Instagram. I'm going to start again because I realised that the light had gone really peculiar. I was saying that I am on Instagram Tales from Cuckoo Land, with full stops in between each word. But I don't really use Instagram anymore. I don't enjoy it. It doesn't feel like as nice a place as it used to be. Ravelry, I, I don't use that in the same way other podcasters use it. I just find patterns on there and sometimes I'll put information about my projects on there but most of the time I just go back through my podcast because if I'm talking about a particular project in its entirety when I finished it I usually put that in the title so that's how I that's how I keep track of my stuff. This isn't the sort of podcast where you'll have many alongs or giveaways or a Facebook group or, or anything like that. It's just not something that I feel I can attend to at the moment, just because of time frame. There was somebody at the door. I think my tea's gone cold now. Yeah, a little bit cold. Right, let's crack on. What's the light like? bit ghostly never mind right okay for my mindless knitting I'm knitting a sock this is the silky yak from lay family yarn and oh that dog what am I gonna do with her I'm just doing a three by one rib I wish I'd done the whole lot three by one rib I don't know why I started two by two I'm just feeling slightly hysterical lately. Borderline on the verge of panic. I think that it's the Welsh Merts. You know, when you pick it up from everybody else around in the atmosphere. <laughs> and it's that time of year where all of my mates are in a tizzy about Christmas, as am I. But because I kind of absorb other people's um, vibe, I feel like I'm in the tizzy for 10 people. And the dogs are shredding my last nerve. 
Right. It's really hard to see that that is a ribbed sock. I'll turn it inside out and then you'll be able to see. So it's the Silky Yak yarn and the colorway is Chartreuse, which I don't think I'm pronouncing that correctly. Chartreuse, I don't know. I'm sorry about that dog. I've just put in a line for where I'm gonna shove a heel in. I'm gonna do uh, my usual top down beanie toe from So Sweet Violets Vanilla Top Down Simple Sock. Um, I just do four or five rounds before, before I start the actual toe instructions. I know it sounds weird calling a heel a toe, but if you knit, you'll know. And if you don't know, you soon will, because you'll just think about it and it'll come to you because it sounds more weird than it is, ever so simple. So that's what I'm doing there. Cool, look at that. Look at that colour. <clears throat> right, I've got her now. Oh, you are so cute. You are doing my head in with your barking. You don't realise that you only weigh five pounds when you're dripping wet and that you can't guard and see anybody off. You're just not scary enough. Right, sit down there and shut up. <sighs> so I got these, this yarn from Kelly who's my friend at Lay Family Yarn. And I saw Kelly recently because I went on her um, retreat. And I know a few of you were really looking forward to footage from the retreat, um, but I failed you because I was having such a wonderful time. I just kept forgetting to pick up my phone and film anything. So if you, it, it was very similar to the retreat that was on, that I went to last year. So if you, is that all right? What did the light just do? So if you want to, want to go and watch that for a bit of an idea of how it works, then um, I'll try to remember to put the link in the description box down below. And if I forget, give me a nudge. This year, I shared a room with my friend Paula, who many of you will know as Stitched by Mrs. D. And we just had such a nice time. <laughs> it was just brilliant. We uh, had the conversation like, are you vlogging? And I was like, well, I was thinking about it, but I'm, I'm just having such a nice time. <laughs> Luckily, we were both in agreement because if one of us had been really wanting to vlog heavily, that might have made the other one feel a little bit uncomfortable. So it worked It worked out really well. I did get this one tiny bit of footage that I'll slot in here now for your enjoyment. Hello, I'm in bed and I can't vlog because of this thing. What you got in there then, Paula? Special favourite. She's brought her mug from home. And that's it. That's all you're getting because we're having such a nice time. We're not vlogging. We can't be bothered. <laughs> we can't be bothered. <laughs> I have to say, I just laughed so much that weekend. It was a really blooming good weekend. And two of my friends from Bristol, Claire and Bex, um, Bex Creates podcast um, and Claire from Bird Street UK Yarn. Bird Street. They've changed their name and I always forget what it is. <laughs> anyway, Claire and Bex were there and it, it, we just had such a nice time. And to be with Kelly is one of my favourite things on this planet. And then there were um, lots of ladies that had come from the retreat last year so we were all back together which was really really good fun and a couple of new faces as well so it's always lovely to meet new people i just had a phone call honestly if it's not i'm just sorting out the lights if it's not dogs it's phone calls or the front door yeah anyway back to the knitting 
So on the retreat, I started knitting this and the more I was looking at this colour, the more I was thinking, oh my Lord, I absolutely love it. Did I cast this on, on a retreat or was it just in my bag? No, I was knitting it. It was definitely... Was I? By the time I was at the retreat, I decided that I wanted a jumper in this colour, but I didn't fancy knitting it in fingering weight. And Kelly, I mentioned last time, has a new 100% organic non-superwash yarn in a DK base. So I said to her, that's what I would like to knit my jumper in. I haven't quite decided on the jumper. I think it's going to be a Fibre Tails one, which is knitted sideways. Um, so Nick dyed up, well, I think Nick did, it might have been Kelly, and posted off to me this yarn after the retreat. How lovely. Look at that for a jumper. Mm. So this jumper I'm wearing now is my Tree Lights jumper, which if you go back and watch the retreat from last year, you'll see that I finished knitting this and then I, I cut the bottom off. It's the Tree Lights by Jennifer Steingast, Knit Love Wool. Wool Love Knit, something like that. I'm all over the place, aren't I? I've just realised there's something else I wanted to show you. I'll show you that at the end. Hopefully I won't forget. So I'll show you the spoils, the things that I got from the retreat. When you are dyeing your yarn, you also dye a number of mini skeins at the same time so that everybody on the retreat gets to go home with a piece of your hand dyed yarn. So this, every person that went got a bouquet of minis. Now, which one do you think I dyed? Do you remember my yarn from last year? I found it absolutely terrifying. So this year I decided I was just going to go for dark and moody and very socky. And last year's yarn was, was, I still haven't knitted it. It's hiding from me. And everyone remembers how much I was dismayed by it. And Nick in particular remembered how much I hated it. But look at this yarn. I love this one. Oh, I love it. So this one is called Marjorie the Trash Heap. If any of you watch Fraggle Rock, You'll know, you'll remember Marjorie, the trash heap. I was going to call it Midnight on the Muck Heap. I think both of these were names that Paula suggested. I am so looking forward to dyeing that up. And there's, there's my mini. I really like that one. Cool. And... Well, there's several in here that I really like. I'm thinking of combining these with last year's retreat minis and doing something with them as a big scrappy project. But I still haven't started that um, linen stitch crochet blanket I was harping on about about 18 months ago. It's still in my mind though. Anyway, because I'd made such a mess of my yarn dyeing last year, this year, Nick was giving out prizes, a bit, oh, I keep wobbling the camera, a bit like Paul Hollywood gives out handshakes. And he gave me the prize of most improved yarn dyer. And <laughs> this was my prize. God, isn't that gorgeous? This one's called Yarn Manac, and it's one of their new colorways. Oh my goodness. And it goes so well with the one that I knitted. So maybe I won't make socks. Maybe I could make something to go around the head. Oh, I love it. And then I purchased this, not that I need any more yarn. You will know I need no more yarn. I think I've got enough yarn to knit continually for the next five to 10 years and not run out. But I had to get this. <laughs> it's called Poodle Paws. Our poodle's buggered off. When did she go? 
Kelly's got a poodle as well. She's got a bigger poodle than me, Jeff. Yeah, poodle paws. I just love that. I'm thinking of doing a hot water bottle covering that one. So that's all of my stash enhancement. Isn't that what they call it? Stash enhancement? But I wanted to show you the beret that I <clears throat> had started just before the retreat, knitted whilst on the retreat and finished about two days when I got after I got home. It's slightly small, I think, but I do love it. I absolutely love it. It's the Biz Biz Beret by Sari Nordland. It's on Ravelry. If you Google B-I-S, spacebar, B-I-S, Beret, Ravelry, it'll pop up for you. It's really lovely. I've knitted it in the same yarn that I knitted my special shawl in, which I spoke about on my last podcast, the one where I, the one that's called Knitting Soiree. So if you're interested in the story, the very sentimental and special story behind both of the yarns in this shawl, then go back and watch that. But if talk of losing a loved one is something that you can't, deal with currently don't go back and watch it because some people have said it made them feel a little bit emotional and you don't need that this time of year it's a nice story a heartwarming story i think but basically i just like to think and talk about my friend who's not here anymore so of course i'm going to feel that way but you might not anyway here we are here is my finished shawl out of my special yarn this is called the Humal Bee Shawl. Can you see the little bees? Did you just hear my tummy? I'm having a bit of a time with my tummy at the moment. I used to have a lot of problems with my innards when I had a very stressful job before I met Toby. And um, I had a lot of very uncomfortable investigations. I had a lot of very uncomfortable symptoms. And I was prone to a lot of stomach bugs. I It was all exacerbated by having Compilobacter and I ended up in hospital for a week with my bowels melting. <laughs> they, they thought they were gonna have to cut about six meters out at one point, but it all resolved and then I worked really hard over the years to change my lifestyle, change my partying habits <laughs> and um, make healthy food choices, really re-educated myself on, on nutrition and um, just changed the stress in my life. But I find when I get a bit stressed and there are things that are going on in life that it, I can't talk about here because it's not my it's not my business to talk about, but it, I'm involved, so it affects me, and I'm having problems with my stomach again, now and again, over the past couple of weeks. It will settle down, it is just a blip, I'm not gonna panic, but yeah, it's a bit uncomfortable. Oh, I'm so sorry, I'm jumping around. So this is my Humalby shawl with my sentimental yarn that reminds me of my friend, knitted in, held together with other yarn that reminds me of uh, another friend because she gave it to me and dyed, I dyed the sentimental yarn with some food coloring that another gorgeous friend had given me. So I've got three lovely, delicious friends wrapped up in this scarf and in this beret. What do you think? Do you like it? I'd completely gone off wearing shawls, but now I'm back on them. Especially now it's so flipping cold. The kitchen is like ice at the moment. And that's because with the energy crisis and we've got a problem with our meter. Um, this is an ongoing issue, but it's now becoming kind of acute. Uh, we've been really cutting back on electric use. 
So the Argo is not on and I'm perished, absolutely perished. I just wrap up in all the woolies. The heating goes on when everybody's home, but when it's just me at home, I just keep moving or I wrap up. Mostly I just keep moving because there's always something to be done. I can show you all the things I've got up to in the next coming weeks. I've done decorating, DIYing, all sorts of stuff. Some of it I kept thinking I should save this for Vlogmas, but then I thought if I save this for Vlogmas, I'm going to be even more of a puddle because there will just be too much to do. Right. Last but not least, I'm going to talk to you about my new cast on. My baby's awake! If you don't like hamsters, look away now. But it's my baby. Look, watch this. Beautiful. I still really miss Lucy, I miss her dreadfully. Look at that little face. That's dried apple. I dry him out apple. <laughs> Used to sun dry it for you, didn't I? That little hammy is so precious. Eat your whiskers. Oh, you're the best. I think I'm going to entitle this video, well, I'll have to entitle it the Hummelbee Shawl and the biz biz beret so that I can find these two finished items, won't I? And then I'll remember. Information. <laughs> oh, forgot to tell you something about the beret. So here you can just see there's decreases there and I think you're supposed to knit eight rows and I only ever knit four rows. This seems to be enough for me. Um, the reason that's my that's not food that's my ring the reason why this is a bit smaller than my other one is because the yarn knitted up tighter are you still looking for more food oh i love him so much i'm gonna have to put him back so i can show you my current knitting i don't know what i'm gonna do when he dies it was bad enough when Lucy went, but when he dies, we're just going to have to get another one in the meantime so that I'm never without a hamster. But I don't think I'll ever get a hamster as good as those two. They've been brilliant. Anyway. Right, enough of that. This is not the really wild show. I'm knitting this now. There's my list of things that I needed to do. I needed to go through Bill's EHCP with a fine tooth comb. <laughs> Sorted that out. Uh, yeah, so what's it called? I think it's called The Forest or something. The Silver Forest. And again, it's by Jennifer Steingarth. Knit Wool Love. Knit Love Wool. Knit Love Wool. And um, it's a pattern that I had in my Ravelry for some time. Um, and knew that I wanted to knit it but I didn't know that I was going to knit it with this yarn that I was given by my friend Nikki. Nitt Nikki Winterton, she's got the, um, it's the Cheap and, Sh Sheep and Cheerful podcast, but I think she might be calling it the Sheepish podcast now. This is um, Debbie Bliss Donegal Tweed. I think it's Debbie Bliss Donegal Tweed. And she gave me three balls of it. And I thought, oh, lovely for colour work. So 
I'd actually earmarked a different jumper called the NG, NG to use this, but that called for a heavier weight yarn. So luckily, often when you buy one pattern from Knit Love Wool, you get another one free or half price. So I'd already got this Silver Forest pattern in my um, in my Ravelry, in my queue. So I did a gauge swatch. I had some problems with my gauge swatch. And so, actually, I don't know what happened. <laughs> Even now I'm confused. I did a gauge swatch. I think I counted, wrote down the rows instead of the stitches and the stitches instead of the rows. But having looked on the ball band, I realised that the ball band matched the gauge on the ball band matched the gauge on the pattern. So I thought it will be fine. It will be absolutely fine. I'll just cast it on. So I, I thought I'll cast on slightly larger because I wanted a slightly bag baggier jumper than my full bust size. So I did that and everything was going swimmingly. You do, a, you just cast on with waist yarn and then a bit later on that green waist yarn will get cut off and um, join in the round, knit a few rounds in your main colour and then you start the colour work. Well, I was well on my way, having checked so many times that I hadn't twisted my row when I joined in the round, but somehow at some point it had twisted. So although I'd been going around quite merrily, what it had then done when there was just a few rounds on there, this had come over. I'm not going to be able to demonstrate because I've not it done this. Can you see? So it twisted itself around. So I was then, I'd mobius it, basically. So I took it off. Am I saying so a lot? I try really hard to not say like for every second word. And I try not to say, so yeah, all the time. It's very difficult, but I think I say anyway and so all the time. And I'm trying hard not to. I was just about to say so again. How do you start a sentence without saying so? <laughs> I ripped off, ripped it all off my needles because I was a bit mad with myself. And it had taken me ages because I had something like 460 stitches. Well, I'm glad now because when it came off the needles and I know there wasn't that much knitting there, so it wasn't a true reflection of the size, but honestly, it was like this. It was, the circumference was giant. So I then thought, right, looking at the fabric, the fabric looked a little bit too open. Looking at the sizing, it just wasn't looking great. So I thought, I'm going to go down to a three millimeter needle, meter, meter needle, which is, did I just say three millimeter needle? <laughs> I hope I did, that was funny. Um, which is two sizes smaller. And I'm going to just cast on the size small and hope for the best. Well, I've had this off the needles on a bit of waste yarn and I've tried it on. Let me get my, oh, I haven't got them. I was going to put some needle stoppers on. Oh, it looks so good in camera. Oh my gosh, it looks really mu much better on the camera. It's showing up much more clearly than it is in real life. Because it's a bit more muted than this, the colours in real life. Um, yeah, it fits. It fits absolutely fine. I don't know whether I'm going to get as much positive ease as I'd originally hoped for. But by the time I'd cast this on, I was just hoping for a nice finished item that if it didn't fit me, it would fit somebody a bit smaller than me. Gosh, I'm pleased with that. That is so lovely. I am admiring my own knitting, but also admiring, mostly I'm admiring the pattern. I'm really pleased with that. Cool. I haven't been able to put this down. It's been one of those things that I just... 
Can't wait to get to the end of the day when I can finally sit down and pick up my knitting. So it's, it is slow going, especially for me, because I don't have an enormous amount of knitting time and I'm not a speedy knitter. I know it seems like I'm a speedy knitter because it was only three weeks ago that I was last here and I hadn't finished my shawl and I hadn't started this and I hadn't done this. But what you need to remember, oh, I hadn't done this. What you need to remember is that I spend quite a bit of time waiting around at the moment for my son, Wilf, when he's doing football training, football practice or between clubs. And I've been on a knitting retreat, which was non-stop knitting. And um, I've just been dedicated. You know, when you just, you're just laser focused. I think with having so much on my heart and on my mind at present, being able to throw myself into something like this and just knit, knit, knit is an absolute necessity. I'm so happy with that. See, I quite like the green with it, weirdly. It's not staying though, it's got to come off because this is a hybrid pattern. You you cast on doing that spare yarn thing and it's this part of the yoke. Let's take this off. It's, can I move you? Look down my top. <laughs> There's an invitation. So you cast on here and then you knit up until you've finished the neck. So it's a hybrid because you then pick up, I haven't got to this bit, so I don't know exactly how it works, but you pick up all of these stitches, leave the arms on waist yarn. You, I think you cast on a few for the armhole and then you just knit round and round and round and round until you've got the body the length that you want. And it's brilliant because it means that you, you're you not wrestling with arms and a body whilst you're wrestling with, at times, three balls of wool because two of these rows, only two of them here, it's um, you're wrestling the brown, the blue and the cream. It's only two rows, but they took me about an hour each, I reckon. My tongue's sticking out like this. Yeah, so it's good because you've you've got all of this tricky stuff done first and then you're knitting down your body and then you can just go on holiday onto Sleeve Island and merrily knit your way down a sleeve, which is like a great big sock. That's my favourite kind of knitting. No complaints from me. And then you're done. You've got You've, you've done all the interesting stuff at the beginning and then the rest of it is just mindless going round and round and round, which is going to be perfect for this Christmas season when we will have a house full. We've got Toby's mum and dad coming and his sister and hopefully my lot will drop in now and again. I've got a very family heavy December, which is lovely. I will be seeing my cousins this weekend and ah, oh, just catching just gonna catch up with everybody i'm thinking of all these other things that i want to tell you but because we've got vlogmas coming i can tell you then so as things come in my mind over the next month or so i'll tell you so this video is probably going to come out on the first of december and then my Vlogmas Day one will come out on the 2nd of December. Um, I will probably keep vlogging, not necessarily daily up until the 31st of December, but certainly there might just be one longer vlog that is the week after Christmas. Because we have lots of things to celebrate. We have Boxing Day. We have Granny's birthday, she'll be 75. We have Teddy's birthday, he will be 15. We have our wedding anniversary, 
18 years, I think. We have the celebration of lovely Kate, my friend, who's the yarn is all, my memories are all wrapped up. It's her anniversary this year, six years. Um, and then it's New Year's Eve. And then New Year's Day. Yeah. All right. See for Vlogmas. Hopefully it will be a bit of a giggle. And, um... Yeah, well, I don't know what else to say. I don't know what else to say, so I shall get on my merry way. Thank you all for watching. I have caught up with lots and lots of my comments from my last podcast and most of them from the one before, but I just, I'm not going to get around not with vlogmas coming i'm not going to get on top of it all i i will forever keep trying but it's not likely so um just if you've left me a comment or if in the future you're about to leave me a comment um that doesn't make sense because you don't well i know what i mean um I'll, you're probably just gonna have to expect a love heart from me rather than a full-blown response which is my preferred response but um I just want to knit, okay? <laughs> I'll see you soon. Oh, let's see if we can get a thumbnail. Oh, I look smarmy, don't I? I look like I'm gonna try and sell you a car. How's that? What about if I go that way? Thank you.